Well, hey, everybody, Mr. Reeves back with you yet again. And in this video, we're going to be looking at estimating roots, square roots, and estimating cube roots. All right, and to help us out here, I have my handy dandy perfect square and perfect cube table, and I'm going to recommend that you have that handy as well because reminder uh, you should not be using a calculator for this we're working off of this table and gosh if you have this first page memorized that sure would be awesome all the way up to 20 perfect squares and perfect cubes uh, but if not uh, make sure you have the table available all right so as we talked about uh, there are a large number of perfect squares and perfect cubes but most numbers you encounter will not be perfect squares or perfect cubes. So therefore, when we're finding square roots or finding cube roots, we have to estimate. All right, so let's just go ahead and dive right in and do some of these problems, shall we? All right, here we go. So it says, which two integers is the negative square root of 34 between. So what I'm gonna do, since we're doing square root, I'm gonna come over here to squares, and as you can see, my perfect square list here does not have 34. I've got 25 and I've got 36, so 34 would be right here. And I do know that it is negative. Remember, when you have a negative outside the square root, that just means that your answer is going to be negative because we're looking for the negative square root. All right, so since 5 squared is 25 and 6 squared is 36, the square root of 34 is going to be bef between 5 and 6 because 5 is the square root of 25 and 6 is the square root of 36. So we're looking between negative 5 and negative 6 or negative 6 and negative 5 since we're going from smaller to larger. All right, what about the square root of or the negative square root of 17? All right, so once again, if we look here is 16. So 4 is the square root of 16 and 5 is the square root of 25 so the square root of 17 is between those much closer to 4 and since it's negative we're looking at negatives it's going to be between negative 5 and negative 4 there we go all right what about negative 63 all right well here we go 8 is the square root of 64 and 7 is the square root of 49. So the square root of 63 is just a hair short of 8, right? So if it's negative, as it says it is, that's going to be between negative 7 and negative 8, or negative 8 and negative 7. All right, let's skip up to the next level and see what they have for us there. All right, which number is closest to the negative square root of 137. All right, so here we go. All right, so here is 144. Let me scroll down a little bit here, right? So do you agree that 137 is in between 121 and 134? So 11 is the square root of 121, and 12 is the square root of 144. So the square root of 137 is between 11 and 12. Now, notice now we need to not only know what it's between, but which one it's closer to. Do you see how 137 to 144, that's a difference of 7? But between 130, 121 and 137, that's a difference of 16. That means our answer is closer to 12 than it is to 11. All right, so in this case, we know we need to be closer since they're negatives to negative 12. All right, so if you take a look at here, we've got negative 11.2, negative 12.5, negative 10.9, and negative 11.7. All right, so we need to be close to 12, but smaller, right? Or in this case, actually bigger, because we're working with negative. So we're looking for negative 11.7. Does that make sense if we were in the positives? 11.7 here closer to 12 but still between 11 
and 12. 11.2 is also between 11 and 12, but it would be too small, and it would be closer to 11. So we're looking for negative 11.7. Fantastic. What about negative 128? All right, so we're in the same area right here. All right, so again, 128, if we're here, that's a difference. Sorry, that's supposed to be 128. The difference there is 7. The difference there, let's see, 14 minus 8. That difference is 16, right? So we need to be closer to 11 than 12, but between 11 and 12. So that's going to be our 11.3. Again, we're working with negatives, but it's the same concept there. All right, can we skip up to the next level here? We are entering the challenge zone. All right, which number is closest to negative 195? It actually looks like kind of the same thing, except the number's just a little bit bigger here. All right, well, 196 is a perfect square. 195 is so close to 196, just a difference of one between those. 169 to 195, obviously a much bigger difference. If it were 199, it would be 30. So we got to take away, what's that? Uh, 15 minus 9 is 6, right? 26 there we go is that right nine plus six is five 15 carry the one yeah pretty sure that's right all right clearly we're right close so we have to be between 13 and 14 but much closer to 14 here we are right here negative 13.9 all right so you get the idea it doesn't get any bigger let's just do one more negative square root of two 98. All right, so here we go. 298 is going to be right here. So we are in between 289 and 324. Well, 289 to 298, that's a difference of what? 9. And then this is a much bigger difference. 298 to 324, that's a difference of 26. So we're between 17 and 18, but much closer to. 17 so i'm looking between 17 and 18 much much closer to 17 17.2 and again i know we're dealing with negatives here but the idea is the same all right so that's how you approximate square roots when you're given a choice there's another video by the way where i'll go over actually how to get an estimate when you're given one but ours that we're doing um, we're just asking what it's between or choosing from a list. All right, what about perfect cubes? Well, gosh darn, it works just about the same way, except we're now we're in the cube column instead of the square column. All right, so 99 is not a perfect square, but if we come here and look, sorry, not a perfect cube, my bad. All right, but if we take a look, 99 is right here, so it's between... 4 and 5 when you take the cube root. So 4 again is the cube root of 64. 5 is the cube root of 125. So the cube root of 99 is between those two 4 and 5. Between 4 and 5. There we go. All right, what about 51? All right, so again, if we're in our perfect cube column that's the third one all right so 51 is between 27 and 64 so again 3 is the cube root of 27 all right 4 is the cube root of 64 so the cube root of 51 is between 3 and 4 right between 3 and 4 there we go all right Cube root of 9, again, don't get confused. We could see this 9, but that's a square root, right? We're talking cube root, so that's over here. All right, well, 2, that's the cube root of 8. And 3, that's the cube root of 27. So the cube root of 9 is just a hair over 2, right? It's between 2 and 3, but much, 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 much closer to two there we go all right let's skip up to the next level and see what they've got for us there all right complete the following statement use the integers that are closest to the number in the middle all right so we're looking for the cube root of 22 all right so there's 8 there's 27 
So 22 is between those. So if we go, 2 is the cube root of 8, and 3 is the cube root of 27. So the cube root of 22 is between 2 and 3. All right, and we actually get to type in those numbers, 2 and 3. Excellent. All right, cube root of 78. All right, so here we go. So here's 27, here's 64, here's 125. So 78 is between 64 and 125. I hope you agree. So 4 is the cube root of 64, and 5 is the cube root of 125. So the cube root of 78, once again, is between those two values closer to 4 than it is to 5, but they just asked us to say what is between, and we're going to say it's between 4 and 5. Easy peasy lemon squeezy. What do they do at the next level? All right, which integer is closest to the cube root of 106? All right, so here we go. We got 64, we got 125. Well, do you agree that 106 is between 64 and 125? I sure hope you do. Do you agree that it's closer to 106, all right? The difference between those is what, 19? And the difference between those is greater than 19. So it's between 4 and 5, but it's closest to 5, right? So we're going to go with 5 here because that's what it is closest to. And we are terrific, aren't we? All right, 12. Here we go. Do you agree that 12 is between 8 and 27? There's only 4 between 8 and 12. All right, that's 15. So the cube root of 12 is going to be between 2 and 3, but much closer to 2 than it is to 3. So 2 is the closest integer. All right, is there one more level? All right, cube root of 248 looks like the same kind of idea here. All right, 248 is between these two. Well, let's see, 216 to 248. That is what? Well, 6 to 8 is 2. 1 to 4 is 3. That's a difference of 32. All right, that's nearly 100 bigger there. That's what, uh, 90. Let's see, if, if this were 348, it'd be 100. Take away 5, right? 95 bigger. All right. So it's between 6 and 7, but definitely closer to 6. Okay. All righty. Do they have anything in the challenge zone that is especially challenging? Or is it just, oh, just more of the same? Except we got a negative on here. Is this the first negative one we've come across? 539. Here we go. All right, so 539. It's between 512 and 729. But again, I hope you can see it's a lot closer to 512 here. All right, so the difference between 512 and 539 what is that? Um, 2 to 9, that's 7, and 1 to 3. So that's a difference of 27. Definitely greater than 27 here. So it's between 8 and 9. That is the cube root is between 8 and 9. Uh, but it's closer to 8. But remember, we're dealing with a negative here. So we want to say it's closest to negative 8. And there we go. All right, so that is how you estimate square roots and cube roots when you're only asked to go to the nearest integer. Again, if you're asked to go beyond that, well, that's another video for another time. All right, I hope this helped. Until then, until next time, have a great day.